So, if I wanted to make your game more accessible, by adding localization and multi-language support, localization, also called internationalization or I18N, is a key element for sharing your game to a wider audience. And even if actually translating all of your text and voices can be a lot of work, integrating them in Godot afterwards is super easy. In short, the engine has two cool built-in systems for localization. For the text, you can use PO files, or simpler CSV files, with your translation keys and then one column per language. Those files will be auto-passed by the engine into the proper translation resources in your assets folder. And then you simply need to open up your project settings, go to the localization tab, and enable the languages that you want to use in your game. And then, for the resources, like localized images or sounds, you can use the bottom part of this localization settings tab, and tell Godot to use alternative versions of the resource for each language. This way, for example, you can easily localize the dialogues, the icons, or the voices of your game. Getting or setting the current local is also really quick to do, thanks to Godot's translation server API. With just a few lines of GDScript or C code, like this, you can retrieve the code of the local currently in use, or the list of available locals for your game, and you can change this current local to see every text and asset auto-update accordingly. Plus, by default, every UI text node will have this I18N option enabled, and so if you put one of your localization keys as the text content, it will get automatically replaced by Godot when the game starts. Then, if you ever need to compute a localized string manually in your code, so if your localization key is dynamic, you just need to use the tr built-in method and pass it your i18 key, and optionally the extra data if your localized string is a formatted string that uses variables. Pluralization is also supported with the trn method, where you can pass the singular and plural localization text like this. Finally, you can easily test what your game will look like for your various languages by going to your project settings, enabling the advanced settings, and in the internationalization section, force a test local by inputting the matching language code, for example, FR for French. Or if you don't yet have all your translations ready, then you can use the pseudo localization options to get a feel for what it could look like when the data is a bit different from one language to another. If you're curious about that, I actually made a complete tutorial on pseudo-localization in Godot that you can check out over here. In a nutshell, all those options allow you to change the length of your text and the variety of characters inside them, typically to test for special Unicode characters. But as always, you can have a look at the demo files for this tutorial that are available on my Patreon. And of course, if you want to get an early access to those quick tutorials on YouTube, you can check out my brand new YouTube membership offers. But in any case, there you go! You now know how to quickly localize your games and make them accessible to even wider communities of gamers. So yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Again, thank you so much to all of you for your support, and as usual, feel free to suggest some ideas for future videos in the comments down below. And of course, thanks a lot for watching, and take care!